really get my hair just right. Hey guys, I want to show you four tools that I love in Lightroom and that I feel like save my life when I'm editing photographs. I'm going to show you these four tools by re-editing a photograph I made six years ago for a friend who wanted some pictures of him with his really cool old bicycle. So let's jump in right now and check it out. <laughs> So basically what we're going to do is we're going to try to take this photograph and we're going to make it look like this photograph using these four tools and some of the other basic options inside of Lightroom. But I'm going to walk you through some of my workflow along the way. So here we go. So we'll jump in the develop module of Lightroom. The first tool I want to talk about is the spot removal tool. I absolutely love it. And this saves my life when my images have dust all over them because there's dust on the sensor and I haven't cleaned my gear in a long time because I'm a bad person. The way that I use this is I go down into the basic panel and I up the dehaze feature like 100% so that I can see these dark dots a lot easier. Then I'll just zoom in around those areas, hit the Q on the keyboard for the shortcut command of the spot removal tool and start removing these little uh, spots. So we'll quickly do the rest of those. Okay, that looks great. Spot removal tool. Inside of that spot removal tool, you have a couple of options. The size of your brush, the size of the feather of the brush. You can change it from heel to clone, which just takes pretty much the exact uh, data from one part to that part that you're trying to fix. Then you can change the opacity of that fix. So we'll get rid of that dehaze, go back to the standard image. Okay, so one of the first things I like to do is adjust my color profile so that it it has a better starting point for my editing. So I'll drop down color profile, I'll actually go in here to browse, and I actually use camera matching, and I'll go in here to portrait, because that was the point of this image. Close that. I'll up the contrast just a hair. I'll actually bring down the exposure just a bit. I'm going to bring the highlights up a hair. I'm not going to mess with the shadows. And I'm going to bring the blacks down just a hair. Um, usually I stay away from clarity um, on an over, as an overall tool on the image. Um, instead, I like to use the second favorite tool, which is an adjustment brush to add my clarity in certain spots in the image. So we'll look at that later. Dehaze is a really fun tool, um, but I'm not going to use any of it. I like to up my vibrance just a little bit, and then I like to pull the blacks up a bit. And that's because I really like a matted, softer look. Um, overall and by bringing up the shadows in the tone curve I can achieve this matted or softer look. Oh one other vital thing I do is I go into lens correction go over to profile and enable the profile corrections which does some automated adjustments to both the distortions and the vig genetting based on the camera I was using and the lens that I was using. And then I also like to enable the remove chromatic aberration feature Chromatic aberration really bugs me. You'll notice it where the brights, where the very brights meet the darks. There'll be a line or whatnot, and it'll be like green or magenta or pink or something like that. Okay, so that's my basic workflow. Now we dive into those specialty tools. We already talked about one, the clone brush. Is it even called the clone brush? I don't even know. What is it called? It's called the spot removal tool. And the other three tools are the radial filter, the gradient filter, and the adjustment brush. I love these tools, and here's how I use them. I'm gonna start off with the radial filter, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of pop to him and make everything else a little bit darker around him. And the way I'm gonna do that is by not inverting the tool and drawing it straight over him, kind of adjusting the shape of it, stretching it out a bit, it's got a pretty large feather to it, and uh, and that's really good right there, actually. Let's see. Yeah, somewhere in there. Uh, 
That's great. Okay, so the next thing I'll do is I'll use a gradient filter. I'll use a couple of different gradient filters um, to bring down the edges of the photograph in certain spots that make more sense to me. We'll drag that out. We'll position it um, in, in a place that that makes a little bit of sense from my perspective. I think one thing I should probably say that has helped me is when I'm out and I'm shooting, I've learned to focus mostly on focus, composition, and exposure. And these things vary based on your vision and imagination and what you're trying to create, of course. But what I mean is, is I've stopped trying to create like epic, amazing photographs in real time and instead I've tried to focus on capturing something that is easier for me to manipulate and create that is that vision. And that's because I'm a little bit faster that way and I have more fun. I can spend more time shooting. I have a little bit more fun and options when I'm editing. I'm not sure if you guys have ever gotten back to the editing software and you know your highlights are blown out or your your shadows are clipping like crazy and there's just so much data lost that you can't you're limited much more on on your options for editing and that can be really frustrating because a lot of times your photographs don't end up being exactly what you envisioned when you do edit them later so it's more important to me to capture a good, clean exposure, uh, a good usable composition, something that if I need to, I can crop it here or there, and making sure that my focus is nice and sharp where I want it to be. So we'll add that gradient filter here. That's just bringing down the exposure a little bit there. And I'm going to do another one right in here. And I'm going to move it around just a little bit. Actually, this one's going to be smaller, I think. Yeah, something like that. Bring that down. And I mean, these aren't this again, this isn't like overkill editing as well. That may be another bit of advice I would I would give you is continue to fight that battle of going too far with your edits. But then also don't be afraid of like editing the photograph until it looks, in your opinion, exactly how it felt. How epic was that moment when you were there? That's important and I think that if your images don't display that or express that to you and your viewers, then you're missing something. Okay, so really we haven't done a ton of things and it's already a much more epic photograph. What I'm going to do is add just a hair of clarity all over the image. So we'll go back to that basic uh, panel and up the clarity just a little bit, like 10, 12. And then I'm going to come in and use one of the final tools that I wanted to talk to you about, which is the adjustment brush. And I'm going to add a bunch of clarity to just some items that I, that I think help emphasize the epicness of the image. So we'll fix our tool here to make it the way that we want it. We know we want it to have a bunch of clarity, and we can adjust all this later. Um, and then we're going to adjust our brush size here. One of the first things I want to adjust is like these bushes on the side of the road. They were way more impactful in person. And just by drawing a bit of clarity on these um, gives me that. So we'll actually go through the entire image here a little bit between his spokes on the bicycle, all the way through it. Perfect, that's awesome. And then we're going to add a lot more clarity to the pieces of the road in here. Both this outer lane right in here, I'm gonna draw a little bit, and then also this side of the, uh, Oh, what do they call that? The lane. The lane line. The painted line on the road. So that's a little much there. Go back. I'm actually going to add a bunch over here as well. 
There you go. And then what I want to do is add some some pop to a couple of places along the bicycle and his body. One of those areas is going to be this shoe pointing towards the, uh, the light up a little bit on the ankle there, just a hair. Let's bring that down. One thing when you're using these tools, uh, a couple shortcuts, you can hold down shift to adjust and scroll up and down to adjust your feather size. And you can hold down alt to just quickly shift between using the brush and using the eraser version of the brush. So we're going to add some to his leg and knee here, right here. Make it look a little bit stronger. And then I really like this area in here with the handle and the brake. So we're going to come in here and give that some, some love. And it doesn't take much. There's just a few areas here and there down this post. Zoom out here a bit. And then I think what we'd want to do is come up this arm just a little bit into the armpit area. And something right in here. And definitely his hand over here with the seat. I think what we're going to do is add another radial filter in here that's actually inverted and give him just a little bit more attention overall, him and the bicycle and the road uh, right in here. So very similar filter to what we added already, but that one was reversed so it was actually affecting everything around it and that was to lower the exposure. This one we're going to, I think, just up the exposure overall on him. So let's do that. Gonna invert it and bring this down. And what I will do is I'll move my filter up just so I can grab these end handlebars and stretch it out farther than the program would originally have let me do it. We'll rotate it just a bit more. And that's really good. Sometimes the filters will go into a space that I didn't intend to light up, for example. Uh, the sky behind here got like a huge impact from that. Um, and one thing I like about almost all of these tools I've told you, except for the spot removal tool, is that you can go into this brush area, hit brush, make your tool larger, oops, make your tool larger, hit Alt on the keyboard to use that eraser feature and simply erase and I'm going to try to do uh, a good job at at lowering what has been adjusted in the sky and it's not perfect but it is really really close go here in between his arms just a bit that just works there's one thing I just noticed there's like a spot on his helmet so I'm gonna zoom in here yeah and we're gonna hit Q spot removal tool scroll down to get just a tiny tiny little dot get rid of that that is so much better let me go to the basic panel and adjust the white balance because I want it to be a little warmer. So we'll just warm up the overall image. And that is it. I hope you guys liked this video. Those are my favorite tools in Lightroom. I'm going to try to make more videos more often. We just had a huge move across the country, so I apologize for that large, like, three-month break of videos. But I'm back on it, and I will try to get these out to you more often. I love your faces. Please like, subscribe, share, whatever it is. If you're not already, follow me on Instagram at halffilled. And yeah, I don't know. We'll catch you next time.